Otto Weininger. Otto Weininger, German, April 3, 1880, October 4, 1903, was an Austrian philosopher who lived in the Austro-Hungarian Empire. In 1903, he published the book Geschlecht und Charakter, Sex and Character, which gained popularity after his suicide at the age of 23. Parts of his work were adapted for use by the Nazi regime, while at the same time denouncing him. Weininger was a large influence on Ludwig Wittgenstein, August Strindberg, and relatively on James Joyce. Life Otto Weininger was born on April 3, 1880 in Vienna, a son of the Jewish goldsmith Leopold Weininger and his wife Adelheid. After attending primary school and graduating from secondary school in July 1898, Weininger registered at the University of Vienna in October of the same year. He studied philosophy and psychology but took courses in natural sciences and medicine as well. Weininger learned Greek, Latin, French and English very early, later also Spanish and Italian, and acquired passive knowledge of the languages of August Strindberg and Henrik Ibsen, I. He, Swedish and Danish slash Norwegian. In the autumn of 1901 Weininger tried to find a publisher for his work Eros and the Psyche, which he submitted to his professors Friedrich Jodl and Laurens Molnar as his thesis in 1902. He met Sigmund Freud, who, however, did not recommend the text to a publisher. His professors accepted the thesis and Weininger received his PhD degree in July 1902. Shortly thereafter he became proudly and enthusiastically a Protestant. In 1902 Weininger went to Bayreuth where he witnessed a performance of Richard Wagner's Parsifal, which left him deeply impressed. Via Dresden and Copenhagen he made his way to Christiania, Oslo, where he saw for the first time Henrik Ibsen's liberation drama Peergind on stage. Upon his return to Vienna Weininger suffered from fits of deep depression. The decision to take his own life gradually took shape in his mind, after a long discussion with his friend Artur Gerber, however, Weininger realized that it is not yet time. In June 1903, after months of concentrated work, his book Sex and Character, A Fundamental Investigation, An Attempt to Place Sex Relations in a New and Decisive Light, was published by the Vienna publishers Braumuller & Company. The book contained his thesis to which three vital chapters were added, 12, The Nature of Woman and Her Relation to the Universe, 13, Judaism, 14, Women and Humanity. While the book was not received negatively, it did not create the expected stir. Weininger was attacked by Paul Julius Mobius, professor in Leipzig and author of the book on the physiological deficiency of women, and was accused of plagiarizing. Deeply disappointed and seemingly depressed, Weininger left for Italy. Back in Vienna he spent his last five days with his parents. On 3rd of October he took a room in the house in Schwarzpanierstrasse 15 where Ludwig van Beethoven died. He told the landlady that he was not to be disturbed before morning since he planned to work and then to go to bed late. This night he wrote two letters, one addressed to his father, the other one to his brother Richard, telling them that he was going to shoot himself. On 4th of October Weininger was found mortally wounded, having shot himself in the chest. He died in the Wiener Allgemeines Krankenhaus, Vienna General Hospital, and was buried in the Motzleinsdorf Protestant Cemetery in Vienna. Sex and Character Sex and character argues that all people are composed of a mixture of male and female substance, and attempts to support this view scientifically. The male aspect is active, productive, conscious and moral-slash-logical, while the female aspect is passive, unproductive, unconscious and amoral-slash-illogical. Weininger argues that emancipation is only possible for the masculine woman, for example some lesbians, and that the female life is consumed with the sexual function, both with the act, as a prostitute, and the product, as a mother. Woman is a matchmaker. By contrast, the duty of the male, or the masculine aspect of personality, is to strive to become a genius, and to forego sexuality for an abstract love of the absolute, God, which he finds within himself. A significant part of his book is about the nature of genius. Weininger argues that there is no such thing as a person who is a genius for, say, mathematics, or music, but there is only the universal genius, in whom everything exists and makes sense. He reasons that such genius is probably present in all people to some degree. In a separate chapter, Weininger, himself a Jew who had converted to Christianity in 1902, analyzes the archetypal Jew as feminine, and thus profoundly irreligious, without true individuality, soul, and without a sense of good and evil. Christianity is described as the highest expression of the highest faith, while Judaism is called the extreme of cowardliness. Weininger decries the decay of modern times, and attributes much of it to feminine, or identically, Jewish, character. 
by Weininger's reckoning everyone shows some femininity, and what he calls Jewishness. Weininger's suicide in the house in Vienna, where Beethoven had died, the man he considered one of the greatest geniuses of all, made him a cause celebre, inspired several imitation suicides, and created a lot more interest in his book. The book received glowing reviews by August Strindberg, who wrote that it had probably solved the hardest of all problems, the woman problem. Died it furthermore attracted the attention of Nikolai Berdyaev, who claimed that after Nietzsche there was nothing already in this fleeting culture so remarkable. Influence on Wittgenstein Ludwig Wittgenstein read the book as a schoolboy and was deeply impressed by it, later listing it as one of his influences and recommending it to friends. Wittgenstein is recalled as saying that he thought Weininger was a great genius. However, Wittgenstein's deep admiration of Weininger's thought was coupled with a fundamental disagreement with his position. Wittgenstein writes to G. E. Moore, it isn't necessary or rather not possible to agree with him but the greatness lies in that with which we disagree. It is his enormous mistake which is great. In the same letter to Moore, Wittgenstein added that if one were to add a negation sign before the whole of sex and character, one would have expressed an important truth, that is, he did not disagree with Weininger point by point but as a whole. Weininger and the Nazis Isolated parts of Weininger's writings were used by Nazi propaganda, despite the fact that Weininger actively argued against the ideas of race that came to be identified with the Nazis. In his private conversations, Hitler recalled a remark his mentor Dietrich Eckhart made about Weininger. I only knew one decent Jew and he committed suicide. In the chapter titled Judaism in his book Sex and Character Weininger writes. Later in the same chapter he writes. Accordingly, Weininger's views are considered an important step in attempts to exclude women and Jews from society based on methodical philosophy, in an era declaring human equality and scientific thought. In her book Nazi Ideology prior to 1933, Barbara Miller Lane shows how Nazi ideologists such as Dietrich Eckhart disregarded Weininger's distancing of himself from accusations against individual Jews, and instead simply stated that Jews, like women, lacked a soul and a belief in immortality, and that Aryans must guard themselves from Jewishness within, since this internal Jewishness is the source of evil. Works. Internal Jewishness is the source.